Hey golf people, on this episode we're covering seven things that I wish I knew before I started playing golf and this will be relevant not only to the beginning golfers out there but also to you more experienced players. It will be a refresher. We're going to talk about mistakes I made, things I'm continuing to change, and things I wish I did better. Let's get right into it. The first thing I wish I did differently when I first started playing golf was simply not swinging so hard. Now that's tough to do when you're young, when you want to really blast the ball, when you're looking at all your favorite PGA Tour players out there on course. As I've gotten older, wisdom has started to creep in and I've realized that I would rather be five or ten yards short on a club and be in the fairway or hit that green rather than spraying it all over the place. So many beginning golfers just want to blast the ball, they go out to the driving range, they want to drive it over the top golf net, all that sort of thing. That is not going to help you actually get more consistent and become a better golfer. By slowing your swing down just a little bit and really thinking about those mechanics of the golf swing, you are going to improve and get better faster. The next thing I wish I knew was that golf is actually a game of opposites. See, when I was young, I tried to lift up on the ball, try to get it up in the air. But really, if you want to hit the ball higher, you've got to hit down on the ball. If you want to hit the ball right, you've actually got to aim your body left. And if you want to hit it left, you've actually got to aim your body right. Golf is a backwards game and that's why it messes with so many people's brains and you've got to start thinking opposite to get the right results. Another thing that I wish I knew was to practice my short game even more than my range sessions. So many people really spend a lot of time out on the range and they forget to go to the putting green or the chipping green or even just go out in your backyard and chip some balls. It's free, it's easy, and that's actually how you score in golf. You will have a lot more chances around the green to save strokes than those big long shots out on the golf course. And so if you really want to improve fast and drop that handicap quicker, you've got to practice the putts and practice the short game. The other thing I would say is start tracking those metrics out on course. Again, not just your driver distance, but how many putts you take, how often you get up and down, how often you have a sand save. If you can shave one stroke a hole for nine holes, you'll likely have a better chance of breaking 100 if you haven't already, or breaking 90 if you haven't done so. So this is one tip, no matter what your experience level in golf, you can probably use, and we're probably not practicing the short game enough. Get out there to the putting green, the chipping green, it's gonna help you improve those scores. Now guys, if you're enjoying this video, if you're learning something, please do hit subscribe, it helps the channel grow. I have a big, audacious goal to get this channel to 100 thousand subscribers and I can't do that without your help so please do hit the subscribe button right now if you haven't already. Getting back to our list the next thing I wish I knew or really understood in the beginning was that equipment matters. And I'm not talking just about clubs but also electronics and some game improvement tools that will help you in your practice as well as out on course. So many people just pick up the first set of golf clubs that they find whether it's a hand-me-down or they visit a yard sale or go to a second-hand store and while sometimes those might end up working out oftentimes you're probably not choosing the right equipment for a beginner. There are clubs out there that we reviewed on this channel. I'll leave some links to them up top and down below in the description. But there are some clubs that will help you get the ball up in the air faster. It will help you hit it just a little bit straighter and prevent some of those really vicious hooks and slices. Not all clubs are made the same. And I would say in the last decade, and especially in the last five years, clubs have significantly improved to really help you hit it further to help you hit it higher and just to be that much more forgiving. So do yourself a favor, even if you're gonna buy secondhand, go to a local golf shop, try to get fitted and see what works and that will inform your buying decisions on your first set or maybe even your second set of golf clubs. It's going to help you improve. Now when you talk about technology, that's something that I am extremely passionate. All the folks that watch this channel know that. But just having a rangefinder and knowing your distances or having a system like the Arco system behind me, again, I will link that down below, but a system like that will show you the weaknesses and strengths in your game and where you need to improve. There is so much technology, things like watches, rangefinders, 
launch monitors, all of these things will help you become a better golfer faster. And I wish I had those things when I was starting out. By the way, I get all of my golf technology at playbetter.com. It is the home of free 48 hour shipping across the continental United States. They've got the best prices on the internet and they're fantastic golf people. And if you use the code LPT, at checkout, they're gonna include some let's play through little goodies for you as well. Now the next thing is something I had no idea about. It's the fact that it's actually easier to play on better courses. So sometimes it might be worth it to spend a few extra dollars and play a better course because you're going to not only get a better design and start to really understand how architects lay out holes and how holes work, but more importantly, the conditions are that much better on good courses, especially things like the apron around the green or especially green side. You're gonna have a much better chance of getting up and down and then having a better score and likely enjoying your game more if you play a better course. When the conditions are better, it's easier to make better shots. If you ever watch one of the professional golf tours and you see these guys and they seem to get up and down all the time or the sand always seems to be perfect, that makes golf a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. When you go to a municipal course or you go to a club that has not necessarily been taken care of and you've got mud patches around the greens or you've got puddles in the bunker. It doesn't make golf fun and it makes you have to learn more shots more quickly. So it's actually easier to play better courses. Another thing I had no idea about when I first started out. Now that point ties into my next point here. The fact that you might actually want to consider a club membership. Now I'm not saying go out and join one of the fanciest clubs in your town but I guarantee there's a tier B or a tier C club in your town that probably is somewhat reasonable to join. Hear me out. If you're going to the range and hitting an eight or a $10 bucket every day, or you're playing a golf course that's costing 40 to $60 to play, even if it's a municipal or a county course in your town, that adds up really quickly. I have a club membership at my club that costs me $300 a month. I can go there anytime, basically morning, afternoon, or evening, take my kids, and it costs me nothing to practice on the putting and chipping greens. It costs me nothing to go to the driving range. And if I walk, it costs me nothing to play. All that money eventually adds up. So even if you're just starting out, you might wanna consider a club membership if you can find one for a reasonable price. Do the math and find out if it works in your budget. You just might end up saving money. I didn't know that, I wish I did. Now my next tip is something that all of us should think long and hard about, especially if you're getting up there in years. A lot of us used to hit the ball further and now we're just not hitting it so far. But my tip here is to select the right tee box. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or an advanced player, this is important thing for all of us. We all have big egos. I've seen so many beginners start from the back tees and it just makes golf frustrating when you have to hit a three, four, five iron into a green every single hole. You're spraying it all over the course. You're going OB, you're going into the water, you can't carry it. It makes no sense to make golf harder, especially in the beginning. You wanna make it as enjoyable and as user-friendly as possible that's going to help you build your love of the game. I've been a big proponent that we should get rid of the red tees. It's got a connotation, especially in the United States, that that's the women's tees. And really we should make them random colors and you just play the yardage that suits your game. Every time you go to the golf course and you can start at the range, take a little inventory of your game and how far you're hitting clubs. Take out your range finder, look at those flags, see how far out they are and see where your ball's landing because from day to day, your energy levels may change. And again, you wanna make golf an enjoyable experience. You wanna have fun. You don't wanna be throwing clubs out there because you can't hit any greens or because you can't clear that water. Guys, I hope you enjoyed my seven things I wish I knew. And I'd love for you to leave a comment down below and let me know a tip for all of us that you wish you knew when you first started playing golf. So guys, if you enjoyed this one, I've got a couple of other videos here that I think you're really going to love as well. We're putting out a ton of content this summer, so keep checking back, and I'll see you next time on another edition of Let's Play Through.